well in this video lecture we are going to discuss the conditional factor demand function and uh, comparative statics okay so if the optimization problem is minimization of the total cost subject to a given level of output right then we apply the first order conditions and second order condition to minimize the total cost so if we apply the first order condition after developing a lagrangian function the first order condition can be reported by these equations this equation shows this is a vector of equations in which uh, which shows the derivative of the lagrangian function with respect to all factor inputs xi can be any factor input and this is the derivative of the lagrangian function with respect to lambda right so <coughs> as we know that the first error condition uh, must be satisfied by the factor demand function so we can also report the first error condition by these two equations this time this is not x only rather this is the vector of factor conditional factor demand function because x is the function of input prices and output right and we replace the x by the x is the function of w and y x is what this is the conditional factor demand function at minimum cost in uh, given level of output similarly if we report this equation by uh, a gradient so it will be something like this this is the vector w is the vector of input prices d f of x this is the gradient which shows the vector of all first order derivative with respect to x i that is with respect to x 1 with respect to x 2 with respect to up to x n right now uh, if we assume that there are two factor inputs only then the first condition can be reported by the these three identities suppose if we are having two factor inputs that is x1 and x2 right the price of x1 is w1 the price of x2 is w2 and y is a given level of output then this will be the derivative of the uh, uh, Lagrangian function with respect to lambda and this would result into this identity right this is the derivative of the Lagrangian function with respect to x1 and we put it equal to 0 and this is the derivative of the Lagrangian function with respect to x2 and we put it equal to 0 so these are the first order are necessary conditions for cost minimization and these are identities and it must satisfy by the uh, factor conditional factor demand function for comparative statics uh, we assume that suppose the price of either factor and input changes suppose we assume that the price of x1 that is w1 changes so if w1 changes what will happen to the first error condition so if we allow the price of x1 to change we will get comparative statics of cost minimization so let us take the derivative of these functions with respect to w1 so differentiating the these three identities with respect to w1 w1 so if we take the derivative of the first identity with respect to w1 we will apply the hybrid rule that is we will use the uh, chain rule as well as the total derivative to take the derivative of the first identity with respect to w1 since we know that output depends upon x1 and x2 so if w1 changes it will change x1 and this change in x1 will change the output right and this is the uh, 
the impact of uh, W1 over output through X1. At the same time, if W1 changes, it has also an impact on X2 because of the substitution effect, right? And this X2 in turn changes the output. So that's why we put a plus sign. So as to take the total derivative of the production function and again we put it equal to 0. So this is how to take the derivative of the first identity with respect to W1. So W1 has an impact both on X1 as well as X2. The impact of W1 on X1 is on price effect but the effect of W1 on X2 is cross price effect and both in these effects we uh, observe the we applied the chain rule that is change in w1 as well uh, in x1 as well as x2 then these changes in x1 and x2 then changes your output level similarly if we take the uh, derivative of the second identity with respect to w1 the second identity is given by this uh, this equation so if we take the derivative of w1 with respect to w1 we will get 1 minus as it is and now you can see these are two function first function is lambda and the second function is this entire derivative so if you want to take the derivative of uh, lambda time this function we will apply the product rule so lambda as it is the derivative of this function with respect to w1 plus this function as it is which is denoted by f1 and the derivative of lambda with respect to w1 and again we put it equal to 0 because it has already been put equal to 0 all right so it should be noted that f1 is already the derivative of the production function with respect to x1 so lambda as it is and this derivative can be reported as as w1 changes change in w1 leads to change in x1 and change in x1 leads to change in f but it should be noted that one derivative of the production function with respect to x1 is already here because this is f1 this is the derivative of the function with respect to x1 so that's why it has become a uh, change in x1 square and this is partial square f so that's why this is a second order derivative why this is second order derivative because this is already a first order derivative with respect to x1 plus look at this when w1 changes it has an impact on x2 and this x2 has an impact on the production function because note that this is total derivative w1 changes x1 as well as x2 so this is the derivative of the function with respect to uh, w1 right and this is the change in x2 with respect to w1 because change partial derivative with respect to w1 of f1 f1 contains both x1 as well as x2 so it should be noted we will take the derivative of x1 with respect to w1 we will also take the derivative of x2 with respect to w1 so that's why x w1 changes x1 and then x1 changes your production function plus w1 changes x2 and this x2 changes production function but this is change x1 change x2 the reason is this is already first order derivative with respect to x1 and the second partial is because of w1 w1 changes x2 and this x2 changes then your production function so we are done with uh, till this this point lambda this entire thing is change in change in f1 due to change in w1 since we are applying the product rule 
we have to put a plus but this minus and plus turns it into negative right and now we have to take the derivative of this function with respect to w1 now look at it f1 as it is now we don't have to change it and we will take the derivative of lambda with respect to w1 so look at it lambda the derivative of this function with respect to w1 plus this function as it is the derivative of lambda with respect to w1 so we applied the uh, product rule over here so if we simplify it 1 as it is minus lambda uh, del square f where del x square change in x1 due to change in w1 plus this is the cross partial derivative right and this change in x2 divided by change in w1 in minus this is already uh, change in the, in the production function with respect to x1 and this is change in lambda due to change in w1 right now in the same way we have to take the derivative of the third equation the third identity with respect to w1 so repeating the same process something like this we will get uh, this equation look at it so we got three equation the first equation is this one right the second equation is this one and the third is this one so we can uh, we can report these three equation in the form of the different matrices. So converting these three equation into matrix form, we will get these equation in matrix form something like this. So again, look at it. If we multiply these two matrices, so again, we will get the above uh, three equations, right? So now we can solve uh, this system of equation using Cromer's rule. So if we take the determinant of this matrix, we will get, get Hessian matrix. So this is a Hessian matrix. And if we take the determinant of this uh, matrix, we will guess, get border Hessian determinant, sorry, border Hessian determinant because it has a border of first derivative of the constraint. So this is a border Hessian matrix and its determinant will be a border Hessian determinant and we can denote it by by H, right? Okay, for Cromer rules, if we want to solve it for change in lambda divided by change in W1, we have to remove the first column and we have to replace it by this column, right? We will get a matrix then we have to we have to calculate the determinant of it right and we will divide the determinant of that by the border has a determinant and we will get the value of this but if we are interested in change in x1 divided by change in w1 we have to remove the second column of this matrix and we will replace it by this matrix right something like this look at it as we did it here the first and the last column are as it is but we replace the mid column by this matrix, right? And if we take the determinant of it, and if we divide it by the determinant of the border Hessian matrix, we will get this equation, right? And this is less than zero. Why this is less than zero? Because for minimum cost, border Hessian determinant must be less than zero. It must be negative. And we can see that this is a square square is positive value because the square of negative as well as the positive values is positive value so the numerator is positive and for the minimum cost per hessian should be negative so that's why overall this is negative so what does this mean it, it means that the demand for factor input with respect to uh, change in its price will be negatively slope higher the wage rate lower will be the demand for x1 lower the wage rate higher will be the demand for x1 because it is negative it, it has a negative sign in the same way if we want to calculate a change in x2 divided by change in x1 we have to replace the third column of this matrix sorry this matrix by this one right 
and we will take its determinant and we will divide it by the border Hessian determinant. So we will get this value, right? And you can say that it is positive because the numerator is negative. If we take the determinant of this matrix, right? So these two way, these, these, if we uh, normalize it by first row, the first and the last term will be zero because its value is zero. And if we normalize it by this, right, we will eliminate this column and this row. We will get these four values, this value, this value, this value, and this value. If we multiply these two, right, minus the multiplication of these two, it will result into a negative value. So this is positive. So it means that factor x1 and x2 are substitutes. The reason is if there is an increase in w1 that is the price of x1 there will be an increase in the demand for x2 because it has a positive sign so it means that both the factor inputs are substitute in the same way a change in x1 divided by change in w2 it is also equal to a positive value so the cross price effect uh, is positive which means that uh, and they are also the same look at it change x2 divided by change in w1 and change x1 divided by change in w2 both results into same value they are the same which is also the uh, result of the Young's theorem the substitution property which means that the cross price effect is uh, equal and it is also positive so it means that both the factor inputs are substitute substitutes of each other. So this is how to do the comparative statistics of cost minimization. Thank you. Thanks for watching.